This is Gary Penny, also known as GP. Gary used to be my old group Iron Man account or normal account over a year ago and in that process I cleaned out the entire account leaving Gary with zero GP to his name. But as they say the comeback is always greater than the setback so in this series Gary Penny will rebuild with the ultimate end goal of achieving a max cash stack. Last episode we achieved full elite void with the goal of taking on Vorkath. We then travel to the Poison Wastes to take on 500 Solra to compare the profits and settle which one is the best of the two. And finally, we set ourselves up for a great consistent stream of income in Toadflax Herb Runs. And I'm excited to see the herb stack grow in value and size over the course of the series. While I was editing the last episode, which took a very long time, I was keeping up with Urbrons the entire time. It's a very passive thing I can do, and we have a lot of them now, so we're up to 7.4 million just from editing my video. I would say that's pretty good money. And the overall value of my herb stack is now nearly 15 million, so definitely worth doing all these. And our bank value is 403 million, so let's see how far we can get that up in this video. The main thrust and goal of this video is the God Wars dungeon. We are going to be defeating 250 of each of the four God Wars bosses, making it a thousand God Wars bosses in total. Except for Nex, as I'm not quite ready for that yet. Now before we get into that, every God Wars general has three minions, attacking with different styles of the combat triangle. And for someone like me who isn't skilled enough to prey flick these, taking damage is inevitable. So having higher defense level to negate some of that damage will help out a lot and that is why I've purchased full Darox for 5 million GP, with the goal of achieving as many defense levels as possible at the Nightmare Zone, an area where you can fight quest bosses in a manner that is extremely AFK and great experience, and Darox is kind of the go-to for this method. We are starting off at 86 defense, and levels do take quite some time, but my goal is going to be 90 defense, so let's get started. And so the grind has begun. I have a good amount of undead creatures in my rotation, and that is why I decided to go with Sal of Amulet E to get 20% damage boost against those creatures. And of course, as it is the Nightmare Zone, we always have the Overload Potions, boosting our stats to the highest possible numbers at all times. The good thing about the Nightmare Zone is that there isn't really too much variation, so I can easily track how much experience an hour I'm getting. And it seems like I'm going to be getting around 110,000 an hour, which is not that bad, it's around 3 hours per level. First level of the grinds, 87. I didn't even think you could get any drops at all inside here, but I guess Long Bones is an exception. 88 defense, 116 combat, 89 defense, one more level to go. And of course, as the professional YouTuber I am, I didn't have my recorder on, but that is now 90 defense and 1.5 million defense experience gains. We're also nearly at 3 million reward points, which is going to be used for future imbues and all that good stuff. But we can now leave the Nightmare Zone. Now, for at least three out of the four bosses, we're going to be using Crystal Armor with a Bow of Faradina, which overall, to be fair, is a very good investment overall. There's so many bosses in the game where this armor is useful, so we have made some investments and crafted the gear. And so here we are with my finalized setup, the Crystal Armor, and we have the Serpentine Helmet to Venom the minions with a blowpipe, and also the tankiness of the helmet definitely helps against the minions as well. The first boss we are taking on is General Grador, the Bandos General of the God Wars Dungeon. I love doing Bandos, and I'd like to believe he loves me as well. But something I love even more is today's sponsor, Raycon. Valentine's Day is coming up and whether you have a significant other or not, you can get Raycon earbuds for yourself, your partner, or just let Raycon earbuds be your valentine. Personally, when spending quality time with my earbuds, I like to listen to various different long-form video documentaries about the Roman Empire, or for example, a three-hour long video of someone reviewing the entirety of the Harry Potter series. Just, um, I like it, okay? Every day Raycon earbuds are there for me, through thick and thin, perfect audio is always at my disposal. Along with being dependable, with our custom gel tips you will always have a perfect in-ear fit when running or jumping during exercising. And they last for 8 hours of playtime and have a 32 hour battery life. They are also noise isolating, meaning while your partner or family is trying to break the door open, you won't even hear a thing. <sighs> All of this for only half the price of other premium audio brands and do not just take my word for it, their over 10,000 5-star reviews speak for themselves. So click my link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash to get 15% off your Raycon purchase, plus free shipping. 
Thank you so much to Raycon for sponsoring this video and making my Valentine's Day just a little extra. When soloing General Grader with the Bow Faradinen method, you have a bunch of marked tiles and you can see I have numbered all of them. The strategy is based around running around on the tiles and attacking one time on each number tile in order. When reaching tile number 6, you click on a cannon based place down and red click through the boss. When clicking on an object and running through an NPC, they actually can't attack you due to some weird mechanics in runescape so this basically allows you to run through the boss at the only time it can hit you and reset the rotation of course before you can actually get into killing the boss you need the kill count as well to be able to even enter the room normally you need 40 kill counts but because i have the hard combat achievements done i only need 35 and killing these goblins is very quick so we're not going to be using ecumenical keys but later on in the video we will cover that as well for the other bosses I'm going to be honest, I'm a bit nervous. I haven't done this in a long time, so hopefully I don't get smacked all too much and die. This is my collection log, by the way. We have only got the tassets and the boots and a bunch of godsword shards. So maybe we can get some new collection log slots or just a lot of money, hopefully. Okay, definitely not the cleanest kill, but we got it. I didn't die on my first attempt, and also doing the first kill is always kind of weird when you have to set up the cannon as well. You can get smacked for a rune longsword. First drop, not too bad, I guess. Okay, we're definitely getting into it. it. Took zero hits that time and a combat achievement to go with it as well to prove my point. That is taking zero hits from the boss. You know what? Not a terrible first trip while learning. 10 kill count done. I definitely can stay a lot longer though if I rebalance my supplies a bit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, that is what happens when you screw up the rotation. You can take a 57 to the face. That is why this is quite a risky method, but when you get it down, it's super clean. No! Oh, I knew this was going to happen sooner or later. Ah, oh, I have to get all the kill counts back just to get my stuff back, and uh, then I have to get the kill count again to actually go back and do the trip. Oh, we have the first drop, I guess, coming in. Godsword Shard 2, 160k. These are only like 1 in 1.5k each, and there's 3, so 1 in 500. There it is, the only elite we're going to be doing this entire episode, because I don't want to do too many detours, so I'm just going to keep this in my bank, just like I did in episode number 1, and we'll try to get a hard, medium, and easy to end off the episode with. Oh, that's a good first item, Bandos Tassets. I think it is the third most valuable item. I think the Bandos Chestplate and the Hilt is slightly more expensive, but ah, oh, that's a super good first item on 89kc. And we do have another shard, number 3, but this is the last one I'll show on video, otherwise the entire video is going to be shards. No way, we have a dragon spear that is, I believe, more rare than a pet. I'll put a drop rate on screen, a pet is 1 in 5,000, pretty sure this is more rare. We have now been here for quite some time, we're hitting 200 KC on Bandos, and as you have noticed, I've only seen one item in the Bandos Tassets, and we get coins again, that is pretty much the most common drop you get, just 19k coins, and because of that, the loot is not extraordinarily good here, except if you get something really expensive, so let's see if we can get something good in the last 50kc. And here we go, this is the final general grader of the entire video for 250kc for another 19.6k coin drop, the uh, most common one to see. This is all the loot that we got and I would say I'm pretty happy with it, at least we got one item. On 250kc on this boss you should see roughly two items, so we have been a bit unlucky but we can probably make up for that on the future bosses. And this is now my collection log, we only got one tacit of course, so we're still missing the BCP, pet and the hill. It is now time to head over to Krill Tutsaroth, the Samurai God Wars General. The method of killing Krill is basically the same as General Grador, but the tile markers are a bit different. But the same method applies, run on the numbered tiles and then click on a cannon at a specific moment. I'm going to be using pretty much the same gear here, except I'm also bringing a Master Wand and a Cold Necklace to use Blood Barrage on the minions to heal back between kills. A very sloppy first kill, but honestly, I have done Krill the absolute least out of all the God Wars bosses, so it kind of makes sense, I guess. But uh, Blood Runes for the first drop, 17k. At least it's not 19k coins. Pardon me, I forgot to show the collection log. We've got three battle staves, which is worth basically nothing, and then one Samurai and Spear. That's pretty much it. So anything else is a collection log slot. No way! 
No way we just got a Samurai and Spear from the Minion. Man, these have dropped in price so much. They used to be like over 10 million easily. They're 4 million now. The drop rate of that is like 1 in 5,000. That is incredible. Honestly, the best thing I did was to swap the left click option on these minions using menu entry swapper plugin on Runelight. It is so easy now because I can't misclick on these absolutely massive minions. So if you're going to be doing this grind as well, I would highly recommend that and keep left click option on on only the boss. What? What? We have another spear from a minion. What is going on? on with this grind man we're getting nothing from the boss the minions are just delivering and on that note we're now hitting 100k on krill so we're getting closer to halfway done with this boss so far and uh, we have not made any money from the boss at all but the minions are definitely making up for it so at least we are in the green on this boss so far now one of the big downsides of doing the God Wars bosses is that when soloing, the supply cost is very high with Sarah Domin Bruce and Super Stores. And on top of that, I need to buy these from time to time, the Enhanced Crystal Teleport Seed, because I need to recharge my Crystal Armor and my Boa for Adenan. So you can hand these in, in Priftinas, for 150 Crystal Shards each, and we're now going to be recharging this. I do think one of these shards is 100 attacks or 100 charges on a Crystal item, so I don't need too many to recharge all the items. Items, but it is a cost nonetheless. Oh, it happened! We actually got a Samuraki and Spear from the boss this time, so we're up to three spears already. Ah, no! Not a Steam Battle Staff! Another one! This is the same drop rate as the Samuraki and Spear, but of course, vastly less valuable. And we're so close to the end of the grind as well. We're on 236 KC, so only 14 more. And that is it, the final kill done on Krill for 250kc, and the last drop is Death Runes. This is all the loot that we got, only one spear from the boss, but I feel like I have to show the minion drops as well, because this is actually worth more than just the boss, so kind of an odd one this time. Being halfway done, we're now jumping into the next one, the Saradomin God Wars General, Commander Siliana. But for this one, we're actually not getting KC, and we're going to be collecting ecumenical keys, so let's go into how that works. In the wilderness, there is a cave containing a bunch of God Wars monsters. To not be attacked, make sure you bring a Samurak, Bandos, Saradomin, and Armadal item. Every single monster in this area has a 1 in 60 baseline chance of dropping an ecumenical key. As I have the hard combat diary completed, for me it's 1 in 50. 55, but if you have all of them completed, you can get this down all the way to 1 in 40. Also, if you have the Wilderness Diaries completed, you can have up to 5 keys, but unfortunately, I can only hold 3 at this current point. But let's go ahead and collect some keys. Getting keys should be very quick, I'm blood barraging all of them basically in a pile, and there are so many of them, so getting 1 in a 55 drop... Oh, well, there we go, that is the first key. Okay, that is the second key. If every time it's going to be this fast, it's uh, going to be a breeze of a grind. Okay, the last one took a bit longer to get, you can see on my supplies, but there we go, finally, third ecumenical key. Commander Siliana is known to be the easiest God War general, and for good reason. The entire strategy to kill Commander Siliana, because it is such a small boss and you don't need to cross through the boss at any time, is to just run around the room and hit the boss at the same time. She can never catch up with you, and as long as you have stamina potions, that's all you need to do. And also, to begin this fight, I always hit every single minion one time with my blowpipe, because it venoms them at 100% rate with the serpentine helmet and blowpipe combo. So at the end of the kill, when Siliana dies, they should be fairly low HP, and I can finish them off with blood barrage. And that is it, first kill on commander for magic potions and defense potions. That is... Worth nothing, I'm not going to be picking that up even. You know what, I didn't account for how much damage these guys actually take from Venom, they're already almost dead at the end of the fight, so I'm not sure how good Blood Barrage really is to bring here. Maybe getting to bring one Restore and one Saradomin Brew, or even a Stamina Potion more could extend the trips even more than the Blood Barrage, so probably not going to be bringing this for the future kills. Oh yeah, these are the common drops you want to see, Saradomin Bruce and Restore, so one of these drops extend the trips by probably 2-3 to three kills, which is of course very good, saving ecumenical keys on every turn. I guess it was inevitable, the Saradomin Sword drop, but we got it way earlier than I expected, we're only on 28 KC, 185,000 GP it seems, and uh, it's, uh, it is what it is. 
We are back to getting ecumenical keys and we get a collection log slot item. Dragon boots as we're cleaving down spiritual mages. I guess I never got this back in my group Iron Man day, so nice to have them. Oh no way, we get a Sarah Domin's Light collection log item. I actually thought this was worth more as it's more rare than a Sarah Domin's sword, but seems like it's worth quite a lot less actually. 51,000 GP, you know what, I'll take the collection log slots. And here we are at 100 KC of Commander Siliana for our rune kite shield. This is everything that we've got and as usual, if you don't get any of the massive uniques, which on this boss is the Saradomin hilt and the armadol crossbow, you don't really make too much money. So hopefully in the last 150 KC, we can see at least one of those big ones. Turns out blood barraging for all these ecumenical keys is pretty good magic experience and we are about to hit 97 magic. No, bro, come on. We're nearly at 200 KC. That is the last drop I want to see at this point. I mean, 188,000 GP drop is a good one, but uh, uh, it's so bad money if you don't get any of the massive uniques and we're getting so close to the end. 250kc on Commander Siliana, and this is the last one. We've only seen a Saradomin's Light and two Saradomin's Sword, and now an Adamant Plate Body as well. This is all the loot. I really did hope that we would get an Armadillo Crossbow, as it's 57 million GP. But I guess we actually, on this grind specifically, because the potions are so expensive, lost money. I think this is the first one we actually lost money on, so that is quite unfortunate. And of course, the collection log is fairly unchanged. We only got the Sarah Domin's Light and a couple of Sarah Swords, but um, yeah, not too much of a difference. It is finally time for us to take on the last general of the God Wars dungeon, Armadil or Kriara. As I've been fairly unlucky so far, this feels like my last chance to really make some big money. The method to defeating this boss revolves around standing in a corner and hitting minions close to Kriara with Chinchompas to bypass the high defense of the boss. As the damage of the Chinchompas is decided on all collateral targets by what enemy you threw the Chinchompa on. The downside of this is that it's fairly expensive. Black Chinchompas are currently worth 4,100 GP each. So every single kill could be easily costing me 100,000 GP just in ammunition. So hopefully we can make up for that loss of money with some massive unique drops. Instead of going with Crystal, I've opted for a more tanky outfit with a shield and the Chinchompas because the boss and the minions do hit a lot. But look at this. One single round of Chinchompas 250 is probably how many I'm going to use for one single round. And this is my final gear setup. We've spent around 15 million on upgrading some of these stuff. And I spent like 16 million on just Chinchompas. I think to show you guys my collection log before we go in, I have been lucky here. As you can see, I've got two uniques in 51 kill count. And these uniques are all worth quite a lot of money so seeing any of them would be a massive win and that is the first kill of the grind for dwarf weeds oh okay i didn't expect that a god search out three from the minion i'm cleaving off of maybe a good omen for how good this grind is going to be hopefully a lot of drops I'm actually shocked at how perfect the amount of supplies I brought for this trip ended up being. We have 13 Chinchombas left, and we have less than one Super Restore and less than one Sarah Domin Brew left. And this is the final kill of the first trip, and it's 11 kill counts in one single trip. Which is definitely less than all the other bosses, but it's because there is so much more unavoidable damage on this boss. But that means, as I'm using ecumenical keys for this grind, I will have to get roughly 23 ecumenical keys for this entire grind, which is... Is, uh, quite a lot of keys, I have to say. Let's go! We Oh my god, we got the Armadil Hilt! It's not worth the most. I actually think this is one of the least valuable items. Still 10.5 million GP, but it is the rarest of the uniques. Of course, not including the pets, but that's so good. Oh my god, no way! No way! We're on the same trip! Look at my inventory! We have the Armadil Hilt, and now the best one! The best item we could have got! Oh my god, we're making up for all the bad luck on Commander Siliana! We've made like what? Over 50 mil in just one single trip. That is... Oh, I'm so excited. That one trip gave me 55 million GP. And another good part about this is that this armadillo chestplate is just a straight up upgrade from the armadillo d 
inside the body. So for the rest of the grind, we are actually going to get to use this body. Yo, all Iron Man in the chat is fuming. What is this? Armadillo helmets are roughly 30 KC later after the chest plate. We're like 62 KC, some, something like that. Okay, we are making bank. What the F, man? What, what is happening? We are getting... So, oh, dude, I, this is so fun to do. It's so fun to just go here and every single trip almost see an item. I, I'm loving this. It must seem to you guys like I've killed hundreds of these with all the drops that I've got, but uh, this is only 100 KC done after this one for some rune arrows, and this is all the loot. Look at this insane loot. We've made 80 million GP on the loot tracker just from 100 kills. We have 150 left to do, so the potential is still there to make a lot more money. We are now 18 ecumenical keys down and we are hitting 200 KC on Kriara. We haven't seen anything in a while. I am very tired right now. It's like 5 in the morning and I have just been gaming hard killing Kriara because I was living off the hype of all those items and getting extremely lucky. And now I just want to finish off the grind and hopefully get at least one item before we hit 250. Oh my god. No way, we got the last item. I can't scream right now because my fiance is sleeping and I am just up gaming, playing Armadillo all this time. Look at this, we have full Armadillo. Oh, we are making so much money, man. You know, after actually losing money doing the other three God Wars bosses, I am so happy and excited that we actually got this lucky on Armadol. And this is the last kill. I am so happy with the results. And this is everything that we got. 250 kills for 115 million GP. This is the power of the God Wars dungeon and why it could be so extremely profitable. And of course, here we have the almost completed collection log with a bunch of duplicates even in 301 KC. I just need the pet now. And here we are with every single unique collected from the God Wars dungeon in this video. Let's have a quick price check of all of these items. 149 million. But as you can see also in my inventory, as I promised, we also have one easy, one medium, one hard and one elite. Clue scrolls open. So let's start with the easy one. Uh, 1.9k, medium one, 3.9k, hard one, 22k. This has been like the worst opening so far, I think. And the last one, can we get a master? We cannot. 129k. So not much to add on top of that. To be fair, I did also forget the Steam Battle stuff, but uh, 39k value for that. Guess it doesn't matter too much. But let's collect everything from the uniques. And we have a 151 million cash pile. Let's put this into the bank and see how much we made this episode. 481 million bank now. And we started on 403 million. So in this episode, we went plus 78 million from a thousand God Wars bosses. Now, when it comes to Urbrons, I actually only did two of them the entire video because I was so ingrained into the God Wars dungeon grind. So this tab actually only lost value over time. But with 1000 God Wars bosses behind me, it is time to begin the next grind. Uh, one that has the greatest potential for money making so far and i hope to see you in episode number four